Well, let's try to develop some momentum anyway. Hello, and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast. This is... I don't know what episode. I don't even know if I'm going to give this an episode number. But it is Thursday, the 3rd of August, 2017. I am Kent, and I am all by myself tonight. Uh, so let's see how this goes. I've got some some topics that I want to talk about. and um, Call-in show? Yeah, we might do some call-ins a little later on. Let's see how, how it goes. Uh, man, how, how are you guys this week, man? I, this is the part where Amos and I usually talk about how our weeks were. We, uh, bitch about work and talk about how busy we were and all of that. Um, Amos, unfortunately, couldn't join us tonight because he's got some family stuff going on. Uh, nothing bad, just, you know, normal family stuff that comes up. Uh, sometimes it happens on a Thursday night. So he's taking care of that. Um, yeah, man, my week, it, my week started out pretty cool. Went to the movies. I saw the new Planet of the Apes movie, War for the Planet of the Apes. I don't know um, if you guys are fans of that franchise or not. Uh, my son, Lucas, and I are pretty big fans of it. Uh, so it was pretty cool. We um, we were a, a little bit concerned going into it because you know we knew that this was going to be the last of the series. And the first two were pretty strong. And we were like, you know, let's let's hope that they can keep it going. And uh, man, they they brought it. I, I thought it was a, a perfect part three of a three part series. Um, uh, yeah, like it was really strong. It, it 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 was almost poetic the way that it ended. Like the last scene was kind of the uh, like the mirror of the first scene of the first movie. And I don't want to spoil anything, but it was just kind of a, just a perfect bookend, I think. And um, they did a little, little bit of Easter egg dropping uh, to lead into the original, like nineteen sixties Planet of the Apes. And I, I thought that was really cool. I, I really want to watch the original movie again soon, just so that I can like pick out some things. I'm like, oh yeah, that was in, that was in War for the Planet of the Apes. Um. So yeah, that was really cool. If you guys are are a fan of those movies and you haven't seen it yet, I I say definitely go see it. It's it's a it's a big screen one for me. Lots of action, uh, lots of stuff blowing up. Um, yeah. So we we watched that on Sunday, and then we came home just in time to watch the new Game of Thrones episode. Uh, I'm not going to give any spoilers for this either, uh, but. I will say it was a very strong episode, and if you are a Game of Thrones fan and you haven't watched this week's, like, dude, dude, get caught up, man. Uh, real good, real strong episode. The uh, first probably 15 minutes of the episode was all one scene, and it, um, it, it's something that we've been waiting for for a long time, for several seasons we've been waiting for this to happen, uh, which was really awesome. Uh, but I got to say that my favorite scene, if you guys know who Lady Olena is, she's the, uh, um, I, I guess, the, the matriarch of House Tyrell, uh, the High Garden, uh, um, you know, like major house, I guess the High Garden Kingdom. Um, she has been consistently one of the strongest characters in the show. Uh, I know already it, it, it's, a, it's a very crowded show with strong characters. Uh, but she's a standout. Uh, Lady Olena is one of my favorites. And um, she had probably the strongest scene that she's ever had in the run of the show during this episode. It was, it's, it's easily my favorite scene. Even with the amazing built up first 15 minutes, uh, Lady Olena stole it for me. Uh, so yeah, Game of Thrones, y'all. Thrones, y'all. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so other than that, pretty much this whole week I've been, uh, getting my backyard theater set up. Last week I mentioned that, that I finally squeezed the trigger on this project that I've really been wanting to do for, oh my gosh, I, I don't even know, years, years I've dreamt about having, you know, kind of like the, the drive-in movie feel, uh, but in my own backyard, you know, like how awesome would that be? 
And a couple of weeks ago, I finally decided that, you know what, I'm just, I'm just going to do it. And so I started getting the pieces in over the last uh, week or so. And uh, I've, I've got all the pieces now. So I started piecing it all together. Um, so yeah, I've got, uh, so let me, let me bring this up for, um, for the visual people. Uh, let's see, let's see if I can pull this up here. Okay, so there we go. This is the the projector that I bought. It is a uh, ViewSonic. Uh, it's 3,300 lumens. And um, if you guys can see on here, the uh, Amazon price for this thing is 300 bucks. But I didn't pay anywhere near that. This thing, when I got it last week, it must have been on some kind of super sale because I only paid like like 130 bucks or something like that for it. Um, so, yeah, they either marked, marked the hell out of this thing or, you know, marked up this thing like crazy or i just caught some kind of super crazy sale um but anyway this thing is super bright it's it, it turns on so fast i don't know if you guys have ever uh you know spent spent time using projectors like at work for you know powerpoint presentations and whatnot but one of the the things that i always hate about using them is they take so damn long to boot up it's like oh my god i turned this thing on like a minute ago and it's still like i'm not even seeing anything yet uh, this thing does not have that problem at all. As soon as you turn it on, the light comes on and it's projecting whatever whatever you told it to project. I mean, it's it's probably less than a second boot time. Uh, it's fantastic. It's really bright. Uh, it's super easy to focus. It's it's got um, you know pretty much any kind of any kind of connection on the back. Let's see if we if I can um, see if I can bring up the picture here. Yeah, so you can kind of see the the connectors. On the back here, it's got HDMI, which is really the only thing I'm using. It's got um, um, even like old school, like looks like a, a like a S video connector. It's got VGA. It's got like pretty much anything that you want. Um, I think the only thing that it doesn't do is wireless. I don't think it does a, a wireless connection uh, for the source. But other than that, man, it's it's pretty feature packed, and um, I think it's great. Um, so also, so that's the visual. So I also had to get something for sound. Uh, so I'll go ahead and show you, show these speakers that I got as well. I, I picked up these Dayton audio outdoor speakers. Um, these things are awesome, man. I only paid like 60 bucks or no, what are they? Uh, well, it says on here, 86, 65. I think I got these on sale as well. Cause I think I only paid like 60 something for them. Um, but man, these things pack a punch. Uh, I, I plugged them in my re receiver, and they just man, they thump. They're really, really loud. Um, so I gotta, I'm gonna have to watch the volume because this is for a backyard theater. Um, but yeah, so yeah, the, they're really nice speakers. Um, I haven't installed them yet because I'm, I want to permanently mount them. So this weekend, I think I'm gonna get out the drill and. Uh, and get these hung up on, on my shed. Uh, which, by the way, the shed... My, my shed is actually kind of like a... It's kind of like a miniature garage. It's like a half garage, basically. And um, it's got a very, like, really wide surface that's just perfect for uh, for a movie screen. Uh, for Speaking of screen, I'm just going to use a, a king-size sheet, like a white sheet, and just uh, kind of clip it onto the... Um, uh, the gutters that go around my shed and probably stake it down. We've got some, uh, like some, gr like a grommet kit that we can uh, put some grommets in the sheet so that it's, you know, it doesn't tear. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. This, this weekend's going to be a lot of fun. I think, I think we're going to watch Troll 2. Uh, have you guys, have you guys seen Troll 2? It is, to me, it's like, it's the epitome of a backyard movie. Uh, Cause the whole idea is to, you know, set this set this up. Have a few friends over. Um, you know, cook out. Uh, you know, break out a cooler of beer and just kind of sit around and have a good time. And Troll Two is just the the most delightfully stupid, crappy movie that we can all just kind of sit around and and make fun of. And um, I don't know. That's that's the whole idea. I'm I'm really looking forward to to doing the whole uh, you know backyard movie thing. Um, yeah, so to actually watch the movies, what I decided to do 
is use my MacBook Pro as as the source, like as the the video player. Um, but as any any Mac user knows that there's there's no longer a disk drive. Um, in fact, that's the um, that's the case with just about any laptop out there. Uh, you know, good luck finding a laptop anymore that's got a, a, an optical drive on it. Um, so I was like, okay, so now I'm going to have to get an external drive. And the thing is, like, if you try to get an external drive from Apple, like an actual Apple branded product, you will not find a Blu-ray drive. Uh, I think that's probably because Sony uh, probably still owns the Blu-ray name and Apple doesn't play well with others when it comes to stuff like that. They don't like paying royalties and stuff like that. Um, so Jay Dillon in the, in the chat says that I could watch true lies. Uh, yeah, that's, you know, that's a good idea. That's a pretty good movie. And, um, Jay brings that up because, uh, it's got some inside joke stuff from when we were, when we were younger. Um, yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, so I, so I had to search for like a, an off brand or like a third party brand for the external drive. And it was a challenge because you go out there on the internet, uh, get, you know, go to Amazon or just go to review sites or, or whatnot, and you'll just see a mix of everything from Max users, or I'm sorry, Mac users. Uh, you'll see like, man, this thing worked awesome. And then the very next review will say like, oh man, I couldn't get this to work. It's a piece of crap. I had to send it back because it's not compatible with Mac. Um, so I was like, God, I, I don't know what to get. Uh, so I, I reached out to a couple people on Twitter, and I got a response from Allison Sheridan, Podfeet. Uh, anybody that watches DTNS will know who that is. Uh, she was actually a guest, uh, I don't know, six or nine months ago probably on Ritual Misery. Uh, she's really awesome, and anyone that knows who she is knows that she is like an expert on Apple stuff. And she hit me back with a suggestion. She, she actually sent me an Amazon link and said, I said, yeah, I, I just bought this one recently, and it works perfectly. And um, so I went ahead and ordered it, and I got it, and I tried hooking it up, and I had a hell of a time getting this thing to work on my MacBook. And I was like, man, what the heck? Why, like, why can I not get the thing to work? Because when I plug it in, I can hear it power up, it spins once or whatever, and it's like, okay, um, it's it's working it's plugged in but i can't i can't get the mac to recognize it i can't get it to do anything uh, so i was like all right let me let me go to the faq let me you know let me see what i can find let me search through forums let me uh you know look through the the questions on the amazon page for the product uh man I, just, same thing i was getting mixed reviews i got some people saying yeah i plugged it in it worked perfect i got people saying that yeah, I couldn't get it to work at all. I had to send it back. I was like, ah, oh, crap. I don't want to be one of those people. Uh, so uh, eventually, all right, so actually, let me, I'm going to hold this up. So here, here's the drive right here. Here's the, the actual drive. And uh, hang on, let me go back to the more full screen. All right, so here's the drive itself. And it's one of those drives that's got two USB connectors. Uh, one of them, so the the main one you plug in, and that's like your data and like a little bit of power. And then it's got the second one that's supposed to like augment the power. The problem with a MacBook, I don't know if you guys have a MacBook, uh, but if you do, go ahead and take a look at it right now and, and find where your USB ports are. Um, they're a lot farther than that away from each other they're in fact on opposite sides of of the chassis of the laptop so i was like okay damn it so like what the hell am i gonna do like did i just did i order this thing for you know basically wasting my money and my time um so i was like all right it, you know if all else fails i'm gonna have to get like some sort of a like a usb power hub or something and, um, but I was like, oh, wait, wait, I've got, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. I was using the MacBook on battery power. So I was like, all right, I know when you go on battery power, like it, it uses, it sends less power to, 
uh, to certain you know certain functions of the computer, and apparently the USB bus is one of those things. Uh, because I went and got my power cord, plugged the computer in, plugged the drive back in, and sure as heck, it came right up. It uh, uh, showed up in my uh, devices like right away, and I was like, oh, okay, all right. So I spent probably an hour and a half, two hours trying to just figure out how this thing is supposed to work. Uh, but once I got it working, it worked absolutely flawlessly. Uh, so I hooked up all of my components. Uh, I went out to the uh, to the the garage or the um, I guess the oversized shed, if you want to call it that. Um, got everything all hooked hooked up together. Um, I didn't want to set up the things outside, like where I would actually be watching movies. I just kind of wanted to do like a a, a tech uh, run through, and I uh, got everything hooked up and. I was like, what, what movie should I play? So uh, Steph, my girlfriend, actually went and got um, uh, Mad Max Fury Road off the shelf for me. And uh, so I started watching that just to, just to make sure that everything uh, was working right. And I had it uh, you know, displayed on the, the, the back of the, the garage. Um, you know, I was on the opposite side, so I had it you know, blown up as big as I could make it inside the garage. And I just started playing the movie, and I sat down. It's like, man, this looks really good. I got it to focus just perfectly, um, got it going. And, uh, man, I guess I was channeling Scott Johnson. I just became absolutely hypnotized by the movie, and I sat there for the entire two hours and watched all of it. Uh, man, I almost forgot what, what a good movie that is. Uh, but yeah, so th- this is going to be so much fun, uh, you know, doing, doing the movies and, and everything like it, this, God, I, I, I'm so happy that I finally decided to do this. So this weekend, that's my big plan, uh, to get the speakers installed and, um, you know, hopefully get everything set up and, and actually, um, uh, you know, do it, do it, do the whole thing. Uh, so Steph, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Steph sassy in, in the chat. Uh, yeah, we need to, we need to invite some people. We need to get a, a movie night going. Uh, so yeah, that's awesome. Um, Hey guys, uh, you know who some of my favorite people are? It's ritual miseries patrons. Uh, they are some of the, the, the coolest people, uh, they enjoy what we do here on Ritual Misery, and they decided that it had some value to them, and they wanted to give a little bit back to us. And you could become one of them. If you go to patreon.com slash ritual misery, uh, go check out what we got there. We try to include a little bit of extra things for the patrons that, that aren't necessarily available to the general public. Uh, some things are just you know, an early release to the patrons, like our Gloria Young interview. That was a really big hit. Uh, we're gonna have to. We're gonna be doing some more of those. Uh, hopefully, in the near future, we've got a few people lined up that we think are special enough that we can do. Uh, you know, like a weekend interview or something like that, and then release it for our patrons. Uh, so, really cool stuff going on over there. Uh, go check us out. It's it's patreon.com slash ritual misery. Um, let's see. What else do we got going on this week, guys? Um, oh, oh, did you guys hear about this? All right, so I work for the government, all right? So I'm, I'm a government employee, and uh, we have this website that that we go to, like, for job. It's like a job board, basically, and it, it allows you to post your resumes and, uh, you know, apply for jobs and, and things like that. And a new one popped up on there this week. Uh, I've got it pulled up here on the screen. Planetary Protection Officer. Uh, This is a job that NASA is advertising. Uh, It's a one deep position. And, man, I had to check this thing out because I was like, you got to be kidding me. Planetary Protection Officer? Like, what? What's the uniform for this? Is this like? Are, are you gonna be um, men in black? Is this an MIB? Like you're gonna be in in an all black suit, white uh, white collared shirt with dark sunglasses, you know, black tie, all of that. I was like, oh my god! Like, how do you apply for this thing? 
Uh, so I had to go. I had to go check it out. And man, this thing pays well too. It's it's six figures, just right off the bat. the The minimum starting salary is one hundred and twenty four thousand uh, dollars. Yeah. So I was like, oh crap, this is amazing. So I was scrolling through, and it 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 turns out that this job is not quite as cool as it would you know as the name of it would would let on. Uh, it's still pretty neat, though. So basically, this person will be responsible for uh, making sure that like bacteria, um, bacterial contamination doesn't happen between uh, like anything that might be brought back to Earth, you know, from an extraterrestrial uh, body. Like, for example, we send a probe to Mars and brings back samples. Uh, this guy is responsible for making sure that uh like any any contaminants in the samples uh don't basically contaminate the um you know the scientists that are 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 examining it and likewise like anything that we send into space they're responsible for making sure that earth germs don't you know go out into uh into outer space and in extraterrestrial bodies and things like that. So, I mean, it's still kind of a neat job, but it's a lot more, um, you know, brainy, non-adventure. Uh, y- yeah. So you, you pretty much, you have to be a physicist, basically, to get this job. Um, I don't know. It's still pretty cool. You get to be the guy that's th- that his job title is planetary protection officer. I just think that would be just absolutely badass. Oh man, uh, what else? What else is going on, guys? What is, is there anything else going on in the news? Um, anything you guys want to talk about? There are some topics, and I'll I'll just start rambling about something. Um, so, oh, one thing that I know this, that's coming up pretty soon. Uh, the nineteenth of August is the next Diamond Club movie party, and it's going to be Spider Night. Uh, they've got a series, uh, well, not a series necessarily, but a um, a lineup of spider movies. Uh, so that should be a lot of fun. Um, I know Sassy Ann is a huge fan of spiders. Um, she likes spiders a lot. And uh, <laughs> actually, no, she does not like spiders. Um, but in, um, wait, what's in two days? Oh, the 5th. Oh, the 5th of August. The fifth, It's this weekend. Where did I get the 19th? Oh, uh, you know what? I'm mixing things up. The 5th of August. Right, okay. The 5th of August. Sorry, guys. Um, so this is actually very good timing for me to be bringing this up. The 5th of August is the Diamond Club movie party. That's two days from now, folks. Um, so reserve your seats now. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be pretty good. So yeah, everybody can check that out and see how how awesome Sassian thinks spiders are. Um, <laughs> uh, she says, "I can't let you do anything by yourself." But yeah, that's um, that's accurate. That is definitely accurate. Um, man, so I ran through my entire list of things to talk about in under half an hour. Um. <laughs> Joe Mon says that she should walk into the room and smack me in the forehead. Uh, that's yeah, Joe Mon. That's probably going to happen actually, uh, at least in the post show. <laughs> oh man, um, yeah, good times. Um, you know what? How about how about we do a call in? Does anybody want to call in? I actually, I I don't have the ritual misery Skype pulled up, but you guys can you guys can Skype me. It's Del Noche seventy seven. If anybody wants to call in, um, yeah, man, I know there's, I know there's more geeky stuff that happened this week. Some something happened this week that people want to talk about. I know, I know that's the case. Yeah, so dead air. This is just as bad on video as it is on uh, on audio. Yeah, so I don't want any dead air. So, uh, let's see. Who do we got? Did somebody just come online? 
Great for audio listeners. Yeah, Jokemon, you're absolutely right. This is like, this is quality stuff here. This might be a patron's only segment. All right, we're getting a call. All right, let's see who we got here. Hello, welcome to the Ritual oh. Misery Podcast. Oh, it's a, it's a perfect stranger. You, you don't know me, Kent. It's just a random <laughs> internet person calling in. Yeah, I have no idea who this person is. Um, definitely, it's definitely not M. Um, no, not someone uh, <laughs> named M. Especially not someone who saw you in Articular a month back or so. So yeah, how, how's it going? <laughs> hey, uh, this is Hot Beverages, everyone. Um, it's going great, Em. It's it's wonderful to hear from you. I haven't talked to you since Nerdtacular. Yeah, that was a fun time. I'm sorry. I've just kind of been on and off the internet, going on adventures, losing myself in Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, have you been doing the raids? Um, <laughs> how, yeah. how have things been since oh. that Nerdtac that we definitely call Nerdtac and it's not called anything else? <laughs> right. Uh, I think this, it's been called that for 10 years now, right? Nerd tech? Yes, yes. It's always been called that. In fact, Scott Johnson himself was like, I love it when it's called Nerd tech. Um, It's, I mean, why would anyone call it anything else? Because that's what it is. It's always <laughs> been that. So yeah, you're 100% correct on that. <laughs> yeah, I think one of my favorite things from Nerd from Nerd tech was when he called all of Diamond Club the Skittles on the plate of fine food. <laughs> That was great. Like, <laughs> I, I, and if it was any other person or any other context or context, I maybe I would have been offended. Probably not. But it was, it was so, it was so lovingly used. I was just like, oh, Uncle Scott, these are skittles. <laughs> yeah, for like the next ten minutes after he said that, I was calling every diamond clipper I saw a skittle. I was like, hello, fellow <laughs> skittle. <laughs> no, that was pretty great. Yeah. Um, and then I, I, I think the last I saw you, if I, if it wasn't outside the lobby when everyone got kicked out of uh, board game night, was at the <laughs> Have a Drink show party. All the cool kids having a drink yep. at a show. Yeah, that's right. It was at the Have a Drink party. Uh, that was a really good time. Uh, I, yeah, I, was I love those guys. If you guys haven't checked out Have a Drink show, it's, uh, what is it, a bi-weekly, right, on DiamondClub.tv? Every other Sunday. Yep, every other Sunday. Um, check them out. They are at Have a Drink Show, I think, on Twitter. Um, check them out. Uh, follow them, and that you'll see when they uh, when they're about to go live and uh, w- when their next show is scheduled. Uh, they do something that's really cool. Uh, a lot of times they will do a like a tasting, like a, a like a, a flight of beers, and they'll announce it well in advance what it's going to be, and it'll usually be a theme. Like we'll do, uh, say a. a uh, whatever the the new Sam Adams pack is, like their seasonal pack or something like that, or they'll do like a an IPA theme, for example, and they'll announce what the beers are in advance so that you can watch the show and taste right along with them. So it's it's really cool. Yeah, it is really cool. They've been dumb enough to have me on a couple times. <laughs> uh, not, but I don't drink beer, Chris insists on getting me a beer that i like and i'm like no thank you chris i appreciate the kind gesture but no beer is not my thing (laughs) yeah oh man i love it though they're they're, they're really just wonderful people so even if you don't like beer you can enjoy watching them they're they're really cool oh yeah they made me several cocktails uh one time and they're very delicious i think (laughs) only one i didn't like and i don't remember who made it but they're all very nice yeah. Uh, the cocktails, also them as people, they're they're also very nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not so much of them as people, but their cocktails are great. <laughs> yeah, like, like the drinks are great, but like, oh man, I don't know how I feel about them waffles. I don't know. But they, yeah, that reminds me, they have my ruin them. I should probably bug them about that. They also have my Smucker's d- jam that I bought specifically for Nerdtacular and then didn't <laughs> eat with my English muffins because I'm a bad person. Uh, but oh yeah, no, that's not important. Although the ruin them is important. But um, yeah, so so Kent Howard, things in the New Mexico land of New, New Mexico. New Mexico. Uh, it's actually been really rainy lately. You, Wait, really? Yeah, you usually just think of New I Mexico think it's as like a this, desert. Yeah, it's, it usually is. It's a, just a hot desert wasteland. But over the last week, week and a half, it's been raining almost every single day. It's oh, been wow. kind of crazy. Well, that's good isn't it i've never been in new mexico i assume it's like arizona i've been there it's a lot like arizona it's it's usually really dry um hot of course 
but the thing about Arizona and New Mexico, when it does rain, it usually floods uh, because the Ooh. water is just, it's kind of, or the, the water, the ground is like kind of a hard pack, uh, like sand, basically. And oh, so there's no absorption that can't be absorbed or anything. Right, right. And we have to become groundwater. Yeah, water. exactly. Yeah. And we're, we're at the, the foot of a mountain, actually a, a range of mountains here. And so a lot of times what happens, it'll actually rain in the, like up in the mountains and the water just flows down and it'll go right into the valley where we are. And the, like the main road that goes by my house just becomes a river. And so sometimes. Oh shoot. Do you guys get like, Oh, sorry. Uh, Do you guys get like uh, mudslides or anything like that? Uh, They're not unheard of. Uh, We haven't had one in a while, but probably like five or six years ago, there was one uh, like not, not where my house is, but like kind of, in the foothills, uh, I don't know, like five, six miles from where my house is, uh, there was like a lot of people's homes were like really messed up from that. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. I bring up happy topics. <laughs> yeah, um, no, that's awesome. Uh, so uh, Dark Redeemer uh, in the chat told me just now that I never grabbed my bottle of Ruinum. Uh, was one of those reserved for me? I I probably knew that at the time when I was drunk. Um, <laughs> um, I actually well, have I, one bottle here already, so I think one is almost too many because I'm not a huge fan <laughs> of Ruinum. Oh, no, Ruinum is terrible. The only reason I wanted another bottle is because I kind of just wanted a full one to hold forever in, pros- I don't know, in prosperity, maybe bring out at someone's wedding, although someone had mentioned to me, yeah, bring it to their wedding if you hate them. Um <laughs> <laughs> but I figured it would be nice to preserve some sort of history of chat, you know, of chat yeah. realm. Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, you, you know, so um, I, I wanted to make sure that I kept that. Uh, I, did you reserve one? I remember people were reserved. I think Sonny brought in a ton to uh, right. yeah. South by Southwest, and then Bryce was holding on to some of them for people. Maybe you reserved it then. Yeah, I I got one from, I think Sonny gave me one at South by this year. Okay. I think that's where I got it. Because I think mine either, either came from him or Bryce, or Bryce was holding on to my. I don't know. <laughs> there was a lot of room bottles. And, <laughs> and I don't remember. It was March. That was like 12 years ago. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Man. So there's definitely going to be a bottle of Ruinum in the Diamond Club Museum. Uh, when how, how long do you think it'll be before before that's a thing, before we have a Diamond Club Museum? Well, we probably need to do a Diamond Con first. <laughs> right. Uh, although, although we piggyback on other cons, so I, I honestly don't think a Diamond Con is, is very likely. Maybe just piggybacked onto something else, like like it is with Undertacular and that one yeah. time with Create Con and all that stuff. And I guess Dragon Con is technically our thing. Um, but, oh, gosh, I don't know, because... The thing about that, we're so loose and, and 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 cool and friendly, and and nobody tells us what to do, Mom. <laughs> You're not my real parent. Um, but well, if it if there's not one now, maybe I I should, I should just start a freaking museum because I had a bottle of Ruinum that I had on I don't know I had forever. Actually, how the heck did I get a Oh, no, it was shipped from Curly. That's how I got it. I mean, not shipped from anyone. That would probably not be <laughs> legit or illegal. Um, but I got my bottle of Ruinum, and I saved it just for to have something with, like, for Diamond Club. And all the stickers I get from Justin, I'm always, like, I always have to order, like, a lot if I use any. Because I'm like, well, I want to have some for in case, you know, when they're not made anymore. And then I put up and up. So, yeah, I'll start the freaking museum. I have, oh, you know what? I have a museum because I'm looking at, like, I bought stuff from Bill Meeks. I have this old John Smokey thing that says, to Bill Meeks, keep mm. spooning. Signed by the old John, the real old John Smokey. Nice. I have a Diamond Club novel here somewhere. Uh, there's Scam School. Oh, uh, you have a hard copy of the, of the novel? Oh, man. I have it here somewhere. I know I do because Bill Meeks sent me that also. Um... I have a printout here of Action News, too. The old <laughs> plug and play. Well, anyway, I'm going to just trust myself that it's here somewhere because I can't find it at the moment. 
Oh, there's Machine of Death. Oh, that's what we do at Diamond Club. But yeah, no, um, I'll, yeah, I'll, I will start that museum. So how about the answer to that question that was way longer than you probably <laughs> intended me to answer it for is now. No, I, will, I will start the official museum yeah, now. Yeah. You've got quite a few artifacts. Um, I think between you and Time Jumper, uh, there, there's quite a bit of things out there that... Oh, um, I'm... Okay, strike that. Yeah, no, Diamond... Er, Diamond Jumper, jeez. Uh, <laughs> Time Jumper is probably already the museum. He probably already started it. <laughs> yeah, that's so. probably true. <laughs> so I strike everything I just said. Uh, no, he, he's, he's got it covered. Yeah. No, so the, everyone in the chat is, is begging me to talk about kettles. So Sassian brought up kettles, and for those that don't know what a kettle is, um, it, it's a drink that's very popular amongst Americans in Korea. Uh, so basically, it's soju, which is a, a soju is a distilled beverage, um, very similar to a whiskey. A lot of people would call it like a uh, a, a lot like sake or something, uh, or like a rice wine or something like that. But it's really I'm pretty sure it's technically a whiskey, um, but I think it tastes a lot like, uh, like vodka, like a really shitty vodka. Vodka's uh, pretty bad to begin with. Yeah, so it's it's not that good tasting by itself, but it is the perfect mixer. Um, it like it is absolutely like even better. Than, actually, hold on a second. I'm I've got another. Oh yeah, I can get off so you can answer. So let me hold on. Let's uh. Hello? Yeah. Oh, it's Big Voice J. What's going there on? There it is. Um, yeah, I don't I think I might have lost hot beverages. I think I screwed up the uh add to call feature. Uh, so M, I will uh I'll I'll get back with you in a little bit. Uh what's going on, Jay? Oh, not much. Am I am I nice and clear and clean and whatnot? Oh, your voice is perfect. Velvet as always. Ah, oh, sweet. By yourself today, I see. Yes. Uh, yeah, so Amos Amos had some family stuff going on, so I figured I'd try the, the solo thing. So I, I don't know if you could hear me just now. I was playing with the um, the call switcher, and I think I screwed it up. Yeah, you didn't touch that over there, didn't you? <laughs> I did. I need to keep my hands off of this. Um, yeah, so... Like I was saying, uh, Amos had some family stuff going on, so I decided to try my hand at a solo show. Fantastic. I want to get your thoughts on uh, the hidden victims of driverless cars. The hidden victims. Okay. Um, what would you consider the hidden victims? I would consider the hidden victims of driverless cars to be pretty much every country song that has been written since 1976. <laughs> I mean, think about it. We've got our dog. We've got our baby. We've got our mama. We've got Elvis. We've got everybody in the truck. And we're going down a dirt road. Driverless cars can't go down a dirt road. <laughs> oh, my God. Not yet. Um Man, what, uh, what, what, what are they gonna have to? Because this is gonna happen. Uh, driverless cars are gonna be a thing, and I think sooner rather than later, like five, five, ten years from now, we're gonna be seeing driverless cars on the roads. Uh, what do you think is gonna gonna fix that problem? Are we gonna have driverless pickup trucks, or how? Like, how's this gonna work? I would love a driverless pickup truck. I mean, if anything. Um, it will give you a venue to serve more ads. I mean, think about it. You get up in the morning, you're groggy, no need for you, you no need for a coffee because you uh, get in, you uh, scan your eye or your your butter or your hand or whatever it is, yeah. and Google naturally will fire up the car and spray ads all over the windshield because you don't need to see where you're going. You've got ads to watch. That's accurate. Uh, did you watch Black Mirror? No, I haven't. There is an episode. I think it's, it's either the first. No, it's the. I want to say it's the second episode of the first season. Uh, it's called Fifteen Million Merits, I think. And basically, it's in this like kind of a dystopian future where everyone has to uh, exercise, like on a treadmill or a, 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 a like a stationary bike, to generate power, and. 
ads are playing constantly. They're everywhere. And you have to actually pay to like turn off the ads. Uh, so like even Ooh. in your so even in your quarters, like your like your little uh, like dorm room, there's ads that play on the wall. And if you want to get rid of them, like you have to pay a certain amount of credits to get rid of like it's like one ad at a time kind of thing too. And if you close your eyes, the ad will stop until you open your eyes again. Like the world is a big listicle. Yes. And man, that's the, I, I think some version of that future is going to happen. Let me go uh, a little bit further back. Uh, do you remember Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451? Yes. Yes. Big brother. You know, that was made into a movie mm -hmm. that was made overseas because they wouldn't make it here. Something or other. Uh, bits and pieces of it are on YouTube. We watched that in high school, and that sticks with me today. Mm. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen the movie. Um, yeah, so It's a great movie. Mm. Uh, one of the scenes uh, that sticks out to me is uh, the quote-unquote interactive portion of the show, mm. where everybody is watching primetime television, and then somebody on the screen says... Well, Mabel, what do you think? And they're all looking at the screen, and you're sitting there, you're Mabel, and you have to answer for the show to go on. It's brilliant. Wow. Interesting. So do a Google, uh, do a YouTube search uh, for that. I'm sure uh, it may be on on the YouTubes. Um if not that, maybe Vimeo. I don't know whether Netflix has it yet. It's so old. Mm. Yeah, we'll have to check that out. That might be something worthy of the Diamond Club movie party. Indeed. Mm. Uh, so we're going to have like a periscope from your uh, from your backyard this Saturday or uh, <laughs> or what? Well, actually, I, I, I don't know when we're going to do it now um, because I was mistaken and I thought the Diamond Club movie party was in a couple weeks, but I guess it's this weekend. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. We, you know, we could actually, uh, Sassian, we could actually stream all of it on the projector in the backyard. Look out! So look out! We'll now you just happens. big time, everybody. <laughs> look out! <laughs> oh man, that that could be fun though. We'll to, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm going to spend most of the day, I think, getting the, the speakers set up and, and um, you know, finalizing and everything. So, I don't know. Maybe by the time of the movie party, I've got everything all set up and ready to go. So, we'll have to try it. Um, yeah, so... Um, Let me tell you something. Is there nothing better than getting tools in your hand, set into a project, and getting stuff done? Oh, man. Anytime I can, I can wrap my hands around my tool, I, man, I, I jump after that. Well, I figured you outsourced that already. <laughs> oh, if I can get some help with my tools, uh, yeah, that's even better. <laughs> I got to go make some calls. <laughs> we'll see you. All right. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So that, that was a lot of fun. Um, thank you, Hot Beverages, and thank you, Big Voice Jay, for calling in. Uh, that that was uh, a ton of fun. I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping the show up now. I'll probably stick around and do some post-show with you guys uh, after this. But for now, I am going to go ahead and tell you guys that if you want to follow the show, you can go to at Ritual Misery on Twitter. Uh, all the updates for when shows drop and for when we're going live can be found there. Uh, for everything that we've got going on, uh, even Amos's side projects, my side projects, um, anything that we do uh, collaboratively or whatever is over at RitualMisery.com. So go check us out there. If you want to follow me, you can go to Twitter and find me at RM underscore Del Noche. Um, that's uh, that's going to do it, guys. Um, thank you for hanging out with me, doing a solo show. Um, I do want to thank Kevin McLeod for providing this music. You can find all his cool stuff over at incompetech.com. Uh, for me and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. Diamond Club.
Pub hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>